Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grave. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. Now how everybody be do this wonderful. Morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is November the 21st in 2023. And outside, let me tell you, we've had from the 17th, we've had wonderful days of sunshine. And today, the skies are slightly gray, overcast, and there's a strong wind with a slight chill in it. So I'm not sure, but I'm thinking there's going to be sunshine later on today. I hope you had a blessed and wonderful long weekend. I know I sure did. I apologize for yesterday morning. I just did not get enough sleep. The party was in my backyard. Mm -hmm. The party was in my backyard and that stored my sleep. But that's another story for another time. We're going to kick things off this beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning with one done for us by Mr. Akani Jakes and the Choir of St. Mary's in Barbados. This one entitled, When Morning Gills the Sky. Let's have a listen.
this thing is glitching my program is glitching with regards to the song the song keeps jumping and cutting out on my end hopefully you can hear me now and all is working well the words should be up on screen um i'm hoping that that is the case all right let's continue with our opening sentence the lord is in his holy temple let all the earth keep silence before him words from habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. using versicle 1 on page 35 blessed be the lord our god by whose grace we are yet alive blessed be his son jesus christ by whose rising we are set free blessed be the spirit of god in whom is our hope and our joy our invitatory prayer father we come together in the name of your son jesus christ our redeemer to offer you our worship praise and thanksgiving to you belong our power and glory you are the source of all goodness let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended lord amen our first canticle for this morning is the canticle Divinita, which is based on Psalm 95, verse 1 through to 8. Oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For those times and those moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalm 97 and Psalm 99. Let's have a listen. Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of the eyes be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemy on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship God's images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad. 
and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgment, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Psalm 99 The Lord is King, let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion, he is high above all people. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. Almighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among his priests and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They call upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the decrees that he gave them. O oh Lord our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of the Redeemer, based on Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. We can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name. For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our Bible lesson for today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, and it is Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 through to 21. Let's have a listen. A reading of the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 17, reading verses 14 through 22. When they came to the crowd, a man came to him, knelt before him, and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus answered, You're faithless, you faithless and perverse generation. How much longer must I be with you? How much longer must I put up with you? 
bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and said, Why could he not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I tell you, you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. The word of the Lord. Thanks. God. If you'd be so kind as to afford me a couple of uh, seconds here to get back to the beginning of the reading from Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 to, to 21, it should be up on your screen. This thing has been glitching on, on my end. Hopefully, it's not been causing you stress on yours. The last time we were together, which would have been on Friday, um, we had Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through to 20. I believe it was, and we started, had we started yesterday, yesterday I was unable to do morning prayer, um, exhaustion really, um, but yesterday we would have begun looking at Matthew and we would have looked at Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 through to 13, and what is Matthew chapter 17 all about? Matthew chapter 17 is all about Jesus, Jesus being transfigured, it's going to be his triumphant entry, and of course, tax. And the transfiguration of Jesus is from verse 1 through to 13, where he is transformed before his disciples. And this is, of course, six days after the last place where we saw him. He would have led Peter, James, and John um, up to the high mountain, and he was transfigured before them. And this would be um, up on right the hill where Moses and Elijah would have appeared. And his face would have shone, his clothes would have been as bright as sun. And this is where, in talking with them, Peter, of course, equates Jesus and Moses and Elijah and is dramatically rebuked by the voice from the cloud, you know. The voice which says, of course, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him or listen to him. And, of course, this comes after Peter would have suggested in his own wisdom, let's build houses, three, one for each of you not thinking about how they would have survived really but he was caught up in the moment generally and the disciples reacted with a holy fear to this transfiguration of jesus and the transfiguration is believed to be um, by theologians the point where jesus now walks in openly to the ministry he actually came to do he's been doing his ministry all along he's been preaching he's been teaching He's been healing, um, but now it's near to the end. And this transfiguration, most theologians believe, is where the beginning of the end starts. I don't know if I like that phrase, but it is a phrase, the beginning of the end. And here, when he comes down from the mountain, yes, when he comes down from the mountain after the transfiguration, then it all begins to unravel really i'm going to call, call it that and you'll see jesus here in this particular portion of scripture he comes down from the mountain and he casts out a demon from a boy and it seems that the, the demon was too tough for the disciples to handle so he's there there is a multitude and this man comes to him kneeling down before him saying lord have mercy on my son and it's interesting because this particular boy is given a medical ailment in the healing. In the other healings, you would have heard the description of what was going on in the person, but not necessarily given a, a, a reason for why it was so. In this particular one, however, it's interesting that the boy is diagnosed already, and he comes and his father says, my son has epilepsy. He's an epileptic and he suffers severely. And when this epilepsy catches him, he falls into the fire and he falls into water. And we know how dangerous that could be. If nobody's around and the boy has an epileptic seizure and falls into fire, he could get burned. If he falls into water, he could drown. So you hear the concern of the father um, as, as he brings it to Jesus. And the father is also concerned on a second level in terms of, well, I brought him to your disciples. 
and they could heal him. And that's interesting because remember the disciples had already been given permission to go out two by two to seven day, and they would have been able to do miraculous things in the name of Jesus. They would have been able to heal. They were preaching. They were they had restored limbs. They had come back and reported to Jesus how they cast out demons in his name. So what was going on here? Why were they unable to do it? And that, of course, is answered later on. But let's look at how it plays out. The boy's epileptic symptoms, of course, are of demonic origin, right? Though this certainly could not be said of every case of epileptic, either then or today, in this narrative, yes, and, and I think in other areas in Mark, you would have heard where physical ailments were caused by demonic possessions. I think it was a Mark chapter 9 or Mark chapter 10, where there was a boy who was made deaf and dumb by a demon. And Jesus heals the deaf and the dumb condition of the boy by casting out the demon, which is what he's going to do here in this situation with the boy with epilepsy. And it's interesting. You remember when Moses came down from his transfiguration encounter with Christ? When he had come down, he confronted Israel's apostasy and he got down there and he met them with the golden calf that Joshua had built for them because he had been gone for a long time. Yes. And it's the same thing. Jesus returns from the mountain and he enters a scene of spiritual conflict and unbelief. The building of the golden calf is because the people in the bottom were not faithful enough to believe that Moses would come back from his encounter with God and their spiritual unbelief had led them to give up on their faith in God and had created this this Baal to worship, this statue to worship. And it's the same thing Jesus finds. He comes down from the, the moment of transfiguration. He gets down there, there's a crowd. Yes? And the spiritual conflict is why did you not, what, what, how could your disciples not cast it out and it was unbelief on the part of the disciples and perhaps on the part of the father why it could not happen and it's easy for us of course right it is easy to feel christian in our moments of prayer and meditation it is easy to feel like christians when we are in our transfiguration moment and we're in that mountain high it is easy to feel close to god when the world is shut away from us but that's not true faith. That's not religion. That's maybe escapism. We are using that to, to run away and hide from something. I believe real faith, real religion, is to rise from our knees before God and to meet people in their human situation where they are. For me, that is, that is real faith. The putting of your faith into practice for the glory of the kingdom of God is real faith. When the disciples had Jesus around, they weren't so much concerned about things that they could or could not control and handle because they had Jesus. Three were on the mountain with him, which meant that nine were down at the bottom. And of the nine, nobody could help the man with the healing of his son through the casting out of this demon that was causing him these epileptic fits. And Jesus, after he hears the story, goes into his, his, his explanations. You're a faithless generation. You know, how long must I be with you? How much longer must I put up with you? And Jesus is, is, is not necessarily tired of the friendships he has formed. He is tired of their lack of, lack of faith. And it's interesting because we have to be mindful. Sometimes the followers of Jesus fail. Please know that, that you don't think that I am perfect and I could fix everything. Sometimes the followers of Jesus fail, but Jesus never does. And this man was wise because when this man realized that the disciples couldn't help him, he went straight to Jesus. So, yes, I believe you guys should have had authority, but I went straight to the source because I need what I need. The disciples did cast out demons before. Maybe, some believe, it was a higher rank of demonic power. Hmm? Maybe the disciples had been given authority to cast out demons then, but not now. There's several things. But 
the failure was in fact good for them. Whether we believe it or not, sometimes it is good for us to fail because our failures teaches us a lesson. It taught the disciples not to get into the rut of mechanical ministry, not to take it for granted. It taught them that Jesus' superiority was greater than theirs. It taught them how to wish for the presence of Jesus. It taught them that when the problem seemed too big for them, they needed to come to Jesus. Sometimes our failures are lessons that we need to learn from. And interestingly enough, Jesus easily cuts out the demon. But not before he gives us a sense of his frustration with his disciples. I mean, this transfiguration in the beginning of Matthew 17 is the, the, the season of ministry before the cross was coming to an end. I mean, it's coming to an end. He might feel frustrated that the disciples still do not have the amount of faith that they're supposed to have, knowing how close to the end he is. And he expresses this, you're a faithless and perverse generation. How much longer must I have to put up with you? Bring the boy here. And he rebukes the demon. It came out of the boy and the boy was cured instantly. Jesus laid the inability to heal this boy. Yes. And to cast out this demon by his disciples as based on their unbelief. And let me tell you, to be set successful, to be successful in any battle against the enemy, there must be trust in the Lord God who has complete authority over every demon and every principality. Do not walk into a war against something negative with only half a faith that Jesus has gone before to deliver this for you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Strong faith, fervent prayer, these are the things that we need to have when we place things in the hands of God. Things that might seem too difficult for us to deal with. Hmm? And Jesus, you notice, Jesus didn't blame the boy or his father or the demon. Though the demon might have been strong and been there for a long time. The fault that Jesus points out laid with his disciples. And that strikes a chord with me because when the ministers of the gospel find their endeavors with respect to some places or persons ineffective, what are they supposed to do? They're supposed to come by private prayer to Christ, which is what the disciples did. They came to him in private afterwards and they said to him, okay, Lord, why were we not able to cast it out? Where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently? When you feel that your ministry is ineffective, go to God in private prayer. Humble yourself before him and beg to be informed as to the cause of your ineffectiveness or your feelings. And in this case, Jesus tells them, the cause of your unfruitfulness in your labor. Yes? Is because of your little faith. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here, and it would move, and nothing would be impossible for you. Now, you eat wangla, sesame seeds. Hmm? A mustard seed is as small as a wangla seed. And Jesus is telling them that the faith we must have has more to do with what kind of faith we need than how much faith. Hmm? A small amount of faith, as small as a mustard seed, can accomplish great things if that small amount of faith is placed in a great and mighty God. Because you could have a mountain of faith in yourself, but yourself doesn't have the ability to accomplish the great things that God can do. A small amount of faith invested in the right location, which is in Almighty God, is what is able to move mountains. Mm -hmm. Small faith entrusted in a great and mighty God can do great and mighty things. Mm -hmm. And 
Jesus here, in effect, calls faith an uprooter of mountains. And an uprooter of mountains is a phase that Jewish schools used to use. Rabbis used to be distinguished by legal and personal experience. Yes. And based on their effectiveness, were called the uprooter of mountains because they were so smart in their legal practices and in their personal experience that they could make change happen. They were uprooter of things that seemed difficult. And Jesus was saying, you ain't got to have any lots of teachings and knowledge and wisdom. What you need to have is a little bit of faith in me that I can do for you and through you. And you will uproot mountains. And you know what? It's interesting. Because if we went one more verse into verse 22. Yes? Jesus will tell them that... The kind of demon that was there is the kind that does not go out except with prayer and fasting. And I like that because he demonstrates in the one more verse down that our faith and our reliance on God should come through prayer and fasting. Hmm? An occupation with dependence on Jesus. Great prayer and fasting displays our eagerness before God and our willingness to sacrifice the comforts of ourselves in order for him to be able to work effectively in us and through us. Hmm? And when Jesus told them that this particular demon cannot be brought out except with prayer and fasting, it was a way for them to identify with the afflicted person. A way for them to show their dependency on God. And that's what it's supposed to be for us. And it made me curious as to what size is my faith really? How huge or how small? How effective or how lacking? Listen. Our measure of faith should not be compared to anybody else's, first and foremost. Our measure of faith should not be dependent on anybody else's understanding, but should be based on our understanding and our relationship with God. Our measure of faith, as small as it may seem to somebody else, if it is placed and fixed on God, is going to be enough. That's what it is. And I know maybe it has been difficult to maintain your faith. Maybe you're not seeing the change that you're looking for and you've been praying for it. And maybe you've even been fasting. But prayer and fasting without faith that the Lord will act on our behalf is still just the abstaining of food. The two combine. Hmm? Surrender it to God. Trusting that Lord, anything we bring before you does not fall on deaf ears. Lord, do our faith be the size of mustard seed. Hmm? Help us, Lord. To hold on to our faith. Increase our faith, Father God. That with faith as small of our mother, too, invested in you, we will be able to see impossible things in you. You are a God of all possibilities. You make ways where there seem to be no way. Keep our faith firmly fixed in you. Help us to remember that what might seem impossible for man is always possible.
status malus and mustard seed can uproot and remove something. Something. Lord, increase our faith. Let us continue with the profession of our faith in the God who is the God of all possibilities by saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, he died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For our suffrage this morning, we use suffrage E, which can be found on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among our nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O oh Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be. Our first collect for today is the collect for proper 28. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you cause all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today in our world cycle of prayer, we remember and pray for the people of Oman, and in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Armenian Apostolic Church. And now let us turn to our own prayers of personal thanksgiving and intercession. This morning, we would like to express birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Sunday was Mr. Victor Williams, Miss Crystal Flowers, Miss Shabby Joseph, and Mrs. Hazel Burke. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Reverend Richard Wood, Miss Janelle Phillip, and Sir Caldwell Young. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Carolyn Carr, Mr. Jean Dean Joseph, Miss Geraldine Usher, Miss Margot Sanchez, Mr. Collington Armstrong, and Reverend Chapan Darling. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings continue to be upon you for all the days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following in the visuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith 
Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislinn, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Berla. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Villa, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Molly, Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Mr. Sean, Miss Alta, Miss Teresa, and Miss Amy. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, Miss Faith, Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvarine, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Evelyn. We remember and pray for Miss Beryllin, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, Miss Salome, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, Miss Toya, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kalia, Miss Galina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Miss Shelma Dean, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Zinzi, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Julianne, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, Miss Megan, and Miss Charlene. In our prayers, we remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, and Mr. Gary. We pray for Mr. Dudley. We pray for Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismail, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Sir Colville, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Severanis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor. We pray for Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Bishop Wright, Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Glenn, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Albert, Mr. Paul, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Ed. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for healing for persons who have recently contracted COVID-19. We remember and pray for those in their various forms of isolation, those who care for persons in isolation. We remember and pray for those who are recovering from post-COVID syndrome, we pray for and give God thanks for the ability, the availability of a vaccine for the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for all of our doctors, our nurses, our athletes, our cleaners, our cooks, our securities, those in administrative positions, our radiologists, our pharmacists, our lab technicians, and all who work in both public and private institutions. We pray especially for Dr. Hidalgo, Molina, Mongilla, Arnal, Manzanero, Ariaga, Shogreen, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, Young, and Cuellar. We remember and pray for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Lino, Nurse Orel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julia, Nurse Ashley. We remember and pray at this time for persons who, for whatever reason, cannot pray for themselves. We pray together, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered, 
the distance and their weakness have confidence in your loving care and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Nicole Claire, the family of Miss Joan Garth, the family of Mr. Aaron Callis, the family of Mr. Peter Sergio, the family of Mr. Edward Flowers, the family of Miss Margaret Enriquez, the family of Mr. Mike Weller, the family of Miss Mary Lou Stacy, the family of Mr. Wilford Vascasio, and the family of Mr. Catherine. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that God's comfort and peace will be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for return and rest for those who have. In our prayers this morning, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray especially for our students, praying for Tiffany Freedom, Angel Page, Garrett, Jamal, Ariana Pua, Courtney Kai, Ria, Karina, Tammy, Ashley Randolph, and Elisa. Pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Jason, Charles S., Derek, Emil, Charles C., Prince, Candy, Pam, Gavin, Christopher, and Shen. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the most vulnerable in our society. We remember and pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons with pre-existing health conditions, those struggling with lupus, HIV and AIDS, those struggling with cancer, people battling with mental health challenges, people battling with any form of physical disability. We remember and pray for them and we pray for those who care for these individuals, praying that God's provision and protection will be over you. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for security forces, for the government, for the churches, the private sector, all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid. We remember and pray for the international community, those ravaged by the effects of war and civil unrest, those ravaged by the effects of natural disasters, for our persons in their various stages of recovery. We pray that Almighty God would meet your needs. And we pray that he would touch our hearts, that we could be the hands that offer assistance during your times of difficulty. Even as we continue to pray for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster, especially during the remainder of this hurricane season. For the thoughts of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would heal our prayers. We conclude our intercessions this morning by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments. But under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me this morning for morning prayer. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence, as well as in the presence of Almighty God. We want to thank those persons who led us in our online service yesterday. We want to thank the Bishop and Mrs. Wright, the people out west there um, in St. Andrews. We want to thank Reverend Elizabeth and Reverend Rose, as well as all those who um, actively played a role in making sure we had our online service yesterday. I want to thank those of you who joined us on Saturday evening online for the um, cultural, the annual cultural service held at Christ the King, as well as for those who joined us in person. We give you thanks for your support. We give God thanks for your support of the work and the ministry of this diocese. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m the close of the day. With regards to notices, if you are in the Dangriga area, the Mental Health Advocates of Dangriga is hosting their second annual Mental Health and Wellness Symposium. It begins today from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Dangriga Town Hall, and all are invited. There will be knowledgeable professional presenters, there'll be valuable information and resources shared, Breakfast and lunch will be provided. Um, if you're interested, you can still register at 
3836 or you could just show up at the town hall this morning and then work out your registration there with regards to other notices please remember that if your church is having a function that will affect or that is something you could invite the entire diocese to send us those notices and we will be able to hear them for you here on morning prayer for instance the cathedral church of saint john the baptist is having a light a candle concert of joy peace love and hope and this is taking place on saturday december the 2nd at 20 um, 2023 at the cathedral it begins at 7 p.m and the donation is 20 dollars if you are interested in purchasing tickets you can contact 227 3363 for further details and for ticket purchases those i believe are all our notices for this morning i do give god thanks that we had a safe and blessed um Garifuna settlement day we give god thanks for that indeed i didn't hear any instance of violence of any kind thus far we hope that it continues to be that way we're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication followed by our grace our dismissal and then our final hymn let us pray almighty god we thank you for the gift of your holy word may it be a lantern to our feet a light to our parts and a strength to our lives take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the holy spirit and in the name of your son jesus christ our lord amen Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are going to close this morning with a hymn entitled, Open My Eyes That I May See. And just before I play that hymn, I had the wonderful opportunity this Sunday to be in All Saints for the celebration of the birthday of our former Governor General Sir Colville. And at that service, I was able to meet the wonderful Mr. Brad Patico, who um, has been, well, I'm going to say a friend of mine for some time now, along with his family. And thankfully, he is excited that we use his song as a part of our morning prayer show, which means that he has seen and heard of our morning prayer, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'm glad that now with actual permission from the artist himself, we are able to use that portion of music. But we close this morning with Open My Eyes That I May See, even before we have our theme song playing. I do hope you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Slightly overcast and still cool here in Dangiga. I pray it remains the same for you. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now.
Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me never good morning. Now how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another. Beautiful